In today's video, we're exploring how long-term storage affects your ammo, more data about how you store your powder affecting your reload's performance, and why Mike Capula is my nomination for Reloader of the Year. Have you ever thought you had your load dialed in perfectly, and then you went to your range and suddenly your velocity has shifted either up or down, and you don't have an explanation why? If that's the case, you're going to want to stick around for all of today's video. Some of you guys may be familiar with the previous video I did exploring how sensitive H4350 was to relative humidity exposure in its storage environment. Now let me clarify, as this seemed to be confused by several guys in the last video, this has nothing to do with the density altitude that you're shooting in, it has everything to do with how you're storing your reloading components. In this extremely short version, we tested three conditions for powder storage. One, as it came straight out of our jug as I would normally store it. The second, we exposed it to these humidity gels to increase the average humidity it was exposed to. And the third condition, we used one of the desiccant dehumidifiers and pulled the humidity level below 10% and exposed our charge weights to that for several days. Measuring those levels, our humidity level for our high group was above 90 and our low group was below 10. Now we weighed all those powder charges before we did that exposure to have them all at exactly 41.3 grains. There are two things we're looking at. The first is its change in weight due to the absorption or desorption of moisture into the powder itself, as well as we're going to measure velocity to see how the effective burn rate changed of the powder and how that affected our loads. The first thing we measured was our change in weight. Our low humidity group had dropped to 41.06 grains, and our high humidity group had increased its weight to 41.72 grains. Again, all of those started out measuring straight out of the jug at 41.3 grains. Regardless of your feelings about shifting your powder weight change over half of a grain, the velocity numbers here don't lie. When we measured the shift in velocity from high to low, we measured over 200 feet per second. Our room temperature for the load we tested was 2790 feet per second when it was exposed to the desiccant, so below 10% for a few days, our velocity increased all the way to 2869. Crazy enough, when we exposed our powder to high humidity, we saw our velocity drop all the way down to 2651. Again, the same identical charge weight, same everything. The only difference was the environment the powder was stored in. So the shift by lower humidity was around 80 feet per second. If you dry your powder out from the factory, if you store it in a high humidity environment, our velocity lost almost 140 feet per second. To me, this is one of the biggest factors of load development that most reloaders aren't monitoring when they do load development, and to me likely explains some of these magical shifts that some people experience. But if you've already had your ammo loaded, it's fine, right? You're good to go. Well, it's still probably changing some, and I am certain that these loaded rounds are not hermetically sealed. And I happen to have some really old ammo laying around. The date code on this box is 35R596. I'm fairly certain that this is at least 25 years old, and I'm guessing the 96 is the year of manufacture, but I can't be sure. This is certainly not 6.5 Creedmoor, it's 300 Winchester Magnum, but I still think we can learn some interesting info here. Out of the 20 rounds that were initially in this box, 16 were left and have been sitting on the shelf for likely the better part of 25 years. For this, we split it up into three different groups. First group is exactly how it was found. These have certainly not been stored their whole life in a perfect environment, and so I'm sure we're going to see some shift just from laying around on the shelf. For our second group, we're going to remove the already seated projectiles from the cases with our Hornady Collet die. We're going to resize the necks of the cases with a bushing die, just to bring back a little bit of the neck tension that they're going to lose, and then we're going to reseat the projectiles in the same case it came out of. For our third group, we're going to essentially do the same thing, except we're, after we've pulled our projectiles, we've labeled them, we're going to expose the powder and cases to the desiccant to dry out the powder that's been sitting in there for the better part of 25 years. And for today's test, we let it sit there for around 10 days. Before we expose these to the desiccant, I weighed every single one of the cases with the powder in it, and then I weighed it again after it had been exposed for the 10 days. Each cartridge lost about a half a grain of weight due to the exposure of the desiccant, and it was consistent across the group. I resized the necks the same as the others and reseated all of the projectiles. The first force graph I'll show you was from reseeing the original projectiles as soon as I had pulled them. And the next chart here is reseeing the projectiles after they'd been exposed to the desiccant. When we started at the range, our cold bore shot didn't affect our statistics. Our average velocity was 3,017, our standard deviation of 26, and extreme spread of 76. However, the cold bore shot was low. The six shot group was 1.82 MOA. If you'd like to remove the cold bore from the group, it was 1.24 MOA. So you make the decision. Our next sample here is the reseeding only. 
By simply pulling our projectiles and reseating them, our average velocity dropped to 29.87 feet per second. Standard deviation dropped to 18 with an extreme spread of 46. And even though we'd pulled those projectiles, our group size also dropped to 0.78 MOA. The third group that were exposed to the low humidity, the average velocity increased back up to 3,067 feet per second. Our standard deviation dropped to 10 with an extreme spread on that five shot string of 22. However, comparing our group size, the group size opened up to 1.55 MOA. Keeping in mind our box muzzle velocity was 2960, so you're going to have to draw a little bit of your own conclusions on exactly what these results mean. Simply reseating our projectiles, our velocity dropped 30 feet per second, as well as our standard deviation and extreme spread. So it appears just sitting on the shelf, our factory ammo increased in velocity slightly over the years. One interesting detail I do want to point out, for whatever it's worth, the primers on these are actually sealed. Whether that makes a difference in how hermetic these guys are, I don't know, but Overall, we hit the box velocity without a significant change. Clearly by exposing our rounds, we significantly increased the burn rate, but we did also improve our statistics. So draw your own conclusions for what that's worth, but I thought it was interesting. Now, the other humidity data that I want to talk about is actually coming from someone else. If you guys have been watching any F-Class John videos, he did a quick video on a software called Chronoplotter. And I'm like, what the heck is Chronoplotter? So I went to go check it out. One section on the site is about a blog, which truthfully, 99 times out of 100, I usually ignore. But if you care about the subject, you should check it out. I saw the headline on the blog, How Does Humidity Affect Powder? So I instantly had to investigate. The testing that Mike talks about in this blog was similar to what I had done, but far more detailed. I'm going to run through the highlights, but again, it's absolutely worth the read. I want to specify, this is not my data, I did not generate it, but it so closely follows my experience that I wanted to share it. And there's two separate experiments. The first experiment is what he calls the real life scenario. You have an unsealed jug of H4A350, and over time your powder conditions to whatever ambient it's exposed to. Realizing just in our test that when the powder is exposed to higher humidity, it's actually going to gain weight. In his testing, he put 600 grains in each jar, expose them to the humidities. I'll throw his chart on the screen for you, but the lowest humidity which he tested was 14.7. Total weight change was only 0.61% and the other extreme at 84%, it only had a weight change of 0.8%. So not even a 1% change. To put these in more normal terms, if you had a 41 and a half grain charge of H4350 conditioned at your 34.9% relative humidity, it would actually gain the equivalent amount of propellant of 41.62 grains at factory conditions. That same 41.5 grain charge dispensed from your jug if it was conditioned at 14.7%, say maybe in the winter, that would be the equivalent amount of propellant as 41.75 grains if it were conditioned at the factory 53% humidity. The data is very similar to what I experienced, however, the burn rate change is where it gets interesting. In his second test, the low data was similar except he was using the 130 grain VLD and 41.5 grains of H4350, testing at his lowest relative humidity of 14.5% relative humidity. He had velocities all the way at 2879 feet per second, and all the way down on the highest relative humidity end at 83.5% relative humidity, the velocity dropped all the way down to 2650 feet per second. His entire experiment saw extreme spread of 266 feet per second, simply by changing the humidity the powder was exposed to. This is how important this factor can be. One thing he saw was the results were not exactly linear. Between his desiccated 66.5% samples, a 10% change in relative humidity resulted in a velocity change of about 25.6 feet per second. Above 66.5 feet per second, this effect nearly doubled, and a 10% change in relative humidity resulted in a change of about 57 feet per second. So if you're storing your powder in a very moist environment, you need to be aware. On the same blog post, Mike has a second experiment where he isolates the moisture content as the sole variable, and he follows similar results to the first. There is pressure data as well as the data from the second test, and it's very interesting if you're loading an environment where the humidity is not very controlled. But if you want to see that, you're going to have to head over to his website and check it out. And while you're there, he also has software to help us analyze our data. This is the Chronoplotter software that I went over there for in the first place. Currently, his software can import data files from a variety of chronographs, the Lab Radar, the Magneto Speed, the Pro Chrono, to quickly load the velocity data without the need to manually enter it. It also just got some functionality for you guys using shot markers. 
I'm just getting started out using the software and I've already put in my own selfish feature request. But if you head on over to chronoplotter.com, thank Mike for his hard work, all of his data leads posted over there, and this free software tool to help his fellow reloaders. If you missed my first video on how relative humidity can affect your reloads, you can check it out here. If you'd like to help fund some of the crazy testing I do here on the channel, check me out on Patreon over here, and I hope to see you come back next week. And until then, stay safe in small groups.